All right, so let's hop right into our first episode. So what we want to do first is two things. We'll set up our main scene by clicking the 2D scene on the top left and renaming this to world. World, hopefully we can spell it right. There we go. We'll save by hitting Control S or Command S if you're on a Mac. We'll go to scenes and save this file. Now, if you don't have these files, uh, just download them from the link down below. Uh, you just have to fill in your email and you'll get these uh, files. All right. So make sure you get that. And so that way we have all the assets we need and you'll have some of these folders and some of the settings will already be done for you. The next thing we will do is create a new scene. We'll go to the plus sign over here on the top and make sure we click other node and we're going to add a character body 2D. This is going to be the player. So this will rename it to player. We'll hit Command S or Control S, save this in our own folder called Player. As in the future, we might have extra scenes in here, so we'll save it in here. We will add a new uh, node called Collision Shape 2D. We'll add one more node called, uh, we're actually going to find our character, so we'll find it right here. Here we go. So we have the basic actions. Now this is our node that we will be using. Now, this one has many uh, things, but you can see here that it is kind of blurry. So what we'll do first is we're going to delete this, go to the project settings, go to filter, and we'll search up filter and go to textures, default texture and set this to nearest. And then lastly, we're going to actually be using the basic character sprite sheet. So this is the walking and uh, everything like that. Next, we'll go to the animation tab on the right hand side, H frame set it to four, B frame, set it to four. All right, now we go to the transform, we'll reset the position to zero, zero, as I want it to be centered in the middle of my screen here. Next, I will go to my collision shape and make sure I give my player a collision. I will give it a rectangle, and I'm gonna drag this above the sprite by dragging it onto the player, and make sure that this guy just sits at my feet. So the collision will be around my feet. All right, lastly, we'll add a script here. So we're gonna use a node as the template and I'm gonna add my script to my scripts folder. I'll add a new folder here for the player. Open, create, and here is our folder. Now we'll do animation and everything a little later, but first let's take a look at the code for our player. So I'm gonna pop it out by clicking in my scripts. There is this little button right here that allows my script to pop out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, first, essentially, create a constant tile size. Now the tile size we'll kind of look at later, uh, but essentially this is 16 pixels. So this is essentially the movement that we'll be moving. So we will be moving 16 pixels at a time. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add two other variables, one called moving, and this is going to be a Boolean, and it's going to be a false by default, and then input direction. Now input direction is going to essentially tell us what direction we're going. Now in order to do this, I'm going to need a physics fu process function. Now a physics process function is a function that gets called or happens all the time during our gameplay. So essentially what I can do is I can add a few if statements in here. One of them I can say if I press input is action just pressed and I say, let's go down. Then what I can do is I can set my input direction equal to vector two, zero, and one. Now you might be wondering why one, why not negative one? Because down would refer to down, usually negative, right? Well, in Godot, unfortunately, it is a little confusing, but the positive on the y-axis is actually flipped. So you can see the negative is on the top. So you can imagine that when we do up, that will actually be negative one. All right, so but before we do that, and the reason why we're gonna do this, we need to actually reset our input direction every frame. And we can do that by setting our input direction equal to essentially zero, zero or vector dot zero. So that's kind of the same thing. All right, next, what we'll do is inside of these if statements, we're gonna check for elif. We're gonna check for the same thing of these, right? Whoops, there we go but we're gonna now check for down or up. And if I go up, well, what do you think we'll put in here? Well, hopefully you're right. This is essentially we're gonna go negative one on the y-axis. 
Now, I want you to try this yourself as a challenge to essentially complete the other two. So I want you to now complete the uh, UI down, or sorry, UI left and UI right. So hopefully you pause the video and give that a try and you've unpaused. And to continue this, I'm just gonna add an elif statement here. So we'll have elif, elif, elif. And here, I'm just gonna change this to right and then this to down. Now, in here, I'm gonna change the right to, neg to one and zero. And this will be negative one and one, or sorry, and zero. So hopefully your code looks something like this. Now next, what we'll do is we're going to set a function or create a function called move. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually use tweening to move. We're not actually gonna use velocity because velocity is something that generally is commonly used for movement, but we're gonna use tweening. And this is kind of going to simulate that old Pokemon movement. All right, so first what we'll do is in this function move, we're going to check to see if input direction is valid uh, and if moving is false. Now, the only time I want to move is, well, if I'm not moving, right? Now, what I can do, if that's all true, is I'm going to set moving to true. And then I can actually start tweening things. Now, how do I tween? Well, I need to create one by saying variable uh, tween dot create tween, so we'll create one by setting it into a variable. Then I'll call that tween and set the tween property uh, function. All right, so next, once I do that, I will tween the position. So I wanna tween the self. So the object that I wanna tween right here is the itself, right? The player itself. And the property is the position. Now you could do velocity, but I'm gonna do position. Once I de get that, all I need to do, the final position I want is its own position plus the input direction times the tile size. So if you recall, the tile size is 16 pixels. And the last thing is the duration or the time. And this is essentially how fast we go. And I found 0.35 is a good speed. And you can adjust this later and I'll show you how this impacts it in a second. Um, but the last thing I need to do is do a tween callback function and this essentially would be called or it's a function that gets called at the end of this tweening so once this tweening is finished it will call this function move false well i don't have this function so let's create that so move false and what this fun function will do is actually very simple is it'll simply set moving equal to false all right so that is it so this is our movement for tweening or using tweening and now that is actually it. So we can actually close this, hit play, and I'm gonna go to select and make sure I select the world. And of course, we will actually see nothing because I didn't add my player to my world yet. So let's go find my player and drag it into my scene and hit play one more time. And now you can see my player. And if I try moving, it doesn't work. So what we can actually do is take a look at our code and see that we actually never call this function. So we need to make sure that I call this function anytime I move. So anytime I press something, I call that function. Now we'll add that and hit play. And now you can see that I can move around. But we do see that the left is not working. So let's take a look at our left. All right, so here we don't have this as left. So that's a quick little debug problem. So now if we hit play one more time, we can now see all four directions work great. And you will notice that I can't change directions in the middle of my movement. And that is because of this, right? So I can't move if I'm already moving. Now, if you're wondering again about the time, we can make this a little faster or slower, I suppose, actually. And you'll see that it moves much slower. So I do find that 0 0.35 is a little nicer. Now, don't worry if it's too zoomed out. We're actually going to work on that in a future video. Uh, but for that for today that is it for this episode and this player movement so hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned a lot in this episode if you did hopefully you guys can hit that sub button down below like share and comment on this video and of course uh check out some of my other links down in the description and hopefully i will see you all in the next episode